I'm the founder of Liddy LIGO. Liddy LIGO is a vitiligo outreach and advocacy organization. Uh, we were formed about three years ago, uh, and I think we are about 35 people strong. Uh, so today is the first day of Vitiligo Awareness Month. Um, we would love to celebrate. Uh, there have been so many, uh, you know, strides when it comes to Vitiligo, and you know, so many wonderful things going on, but. Uh, as a black person, as a black woman, as the mother to a black son, it's very hard for me to celebrate with everything going on. Uh, so I thought it was important to uh, address this um, and talk about it as we are also three black women. Um, two of us have sons. So uh, that's what we'll be talking about here today. Um, I am so many things. I've been pretty much raw emotion for the past three or four days. And I mean, I can sit here and I can tell you all my thoughts, uh, but I, I I'll tell you this to kind of give you some perspective into what it's like to be black in America, to be a black mom in America. So my son turned 12 a little while ago, uh, a couple weeks ago, I think about a week, a couple weeks ago. And uh, you know, 12, you know, we're right on the brink of teenagers, you know, so big step, you know, we talk about, we talk a lot about, you know, I have a lot of conversations with my son that I feel a lot of people don't have to have at his age. Um, so we keep it very candid. So with everything going on, I asked him how he felt about it. That was Friday. And he didn't know about it. You know, he said, well, I don't know. I just know that someone else was killed, but it's hard for me to feel the way because, you know, it happens all the time. And I kind of had to, you know, digest that. I said, okay, well, if you want to talk about it, we can talk about it. So yesterday, uh, we were at breakfast with my mom. We were in the kitchen. And, you know, we started talking. I think uh, my mom and I were talking about it. And my son was like, you know, mom, I looked it up. Because I told him, I said, if you don't know something, you look it up. So he looked it up. He said, mom, I looked it up um, and yeah, I have some thoughts. And I said, so what, how do you feel? You know, what did you see? How do you feel? And he said, mom, I don't understand why uh, I saw a video of a white man with an ax swinging it at police officers. Uh, and he was arrested, he was detained safely. But then I saw a video of a black man put his hands on his head, behind his head, turn around, do everything the officer asked, and get kicked violently and tackled to the ground by two officers when he wasn't even doing anything. Mom, I don't understand this. Why is this happening? These are the conversations that we have to have, that we have a lot. It is seemingly normalized, uh, even for a child. So these are things that are difficult. They are hard. So uh, we felt it was important to discuss that. So I'm going to turn the floor over to Latanya and Candice. Hi, everyone. Is Latanya gone? Oh, I'm right here. Okay, girl. Hey, everybody. This topic to me is very emotional <laughs> to really talk about today. Um, I'm just so sad that this is the world we really live in. Sorry. It just hurts. I said I wasn't going to do this. I've been a wreck all week due to it. Okay, yeah. <laughs> It is. I'm going to go ahead and chime in. You know, um, it is a very hard topic to talk about. You know, it's so much going on. It's a lot of uncertainty, uncertainty going on. You know, like us having, you know, black son, having biracial, you know, nephew, whatever the case may be. 
you know, um, you pray constantly over these, your loved ones, and just hoping that they come home in the same condition that they left. You know, you yeah. just really never know with so much going on. And That's the scary my part. son is at the age now where he can drive. You know, uh, and he's at the age where he wants to go places and do things. And I tell him, it's not that I don't want you to go, but mm-hmm. when you go out somewhere, you're hanging out with your friends, you know, and I always just pray like, oh God, I hope you don't get into something because, you know, people throw rocks and they hide their hand. And our black sons are the ones you know, mm-hmm. that would get looked at, you know, first. First, yeah. You know, and I, it's just really sad and it's really hard for us as parents, you know, aunts, whatever the case may be, whatever role you may play in their lives, you know what I'm saying? It's just very hard. I mean, like, it is very emotional. You know, I hate to even turn on the news. You know, and I just said that, you know, it is. It's the first day of June. We should be happy. You know, I know right? Celebrate and, you know. Be the LIGO Be the LIGO month. You know what I'm saying? Or whatnot. But, again, we're dealing with a lot of nonsense. You know. And I fear. It's, 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 it's crazy. Oh, my gosh. It, it's just, it's so crazy, you know. Going from the COVID nineteen to this, you know, you don't even hear that news no more. Oh, people really are. People are really showing you their true colors. Their true colors during this time, and people are calling them out on it. People are losing their jobs Job. over this. I mean, you know, I applaud. You know, it's just I hate to see people lose their job, but at the same time, you got to be smart about this. You exactly. know what I'm saying? Again, that yeah. goes again like throwing rocks and trying to hide your hand and say that, oh, my page got hacked or I didn't do mm-hmm. this or I didn't do that. Yeah, you, you know, did. People, they screenshot queens and kings around here now and they gonna call you out on it. And <laughs> I mean, like, it's almost that, you know, I will be Take my, you know, a mental break for this because in, in all of this, we still need self care. You know what I'm saying? If we constantly keep looking at this, you know, it is, it's mentally draining and emotionally. Yeah. So, you know, through it all, you know, everyone, you know, I do want to say self care. Make sure you're taking care of yourself. Don't let this pull you down. out of your character either. Don't let it pull you out your character either. Yeah. Uh, because it can. Mm-hmm. And I really do fear for like, I don't have kids yet, but I do fear for the future of my children if we don't have like a I said like a good leader to lead us and actually make changes. I'm scared. Because it is. And then and we supposedly, you know, our generation are the kids that's one's going to be, you know, if they go to be politics, want to be, but, you know, these are the people that we are raising, our generation, yeah. you know what I'm saying? In the years to come, this stuff is, you know, they kids go by what they see. Yeah. I just hate that it's all because of color. All because of your color. And it's it's funny to me because I'm like, us having been a LIGO, it's it should just go to prove that it is just skin. It it doesn't our skin doesn't really just define who we are. It's just skin. And you hate people because we're black, or you hate someone vice versa, like it just don't make sense. It just doesn't make sense. I don't understand. <laughs> I just don't understand. Yeah. I mean, it, it's just, it's it's really depressing at the same state, you know, at the same time. But, you know, we still have to get up. We still have to go to work. You know, we still yeah. have to do these things 
in times like this. You know, and not only the black men, the black women, you know, we, you know, we have to watch out for ourselves too, you know? Yes. So it's women that have been murdered, you know? Oh, yeah. It's been all. You know, kids. but this one thing, yeah, it's, it's, it's been a lot that has been going on that has transpired, you know, and it's like every year is something, it's something, it's something. You know that, and I think they were saying it has been exactly. I think like five years, if I'm not mistaken, since um, what's his name? Eric Garner. Eric Garner. But oh, yeah, yeah, they said it was like five years, like since that happened for him. For it to all this just happen all over again. When is the change gonna come? I'm not a political person mm -hmm. at all, but what are the necessary steps to like? I mean. People hate, they're everywhere. Like, how can you weed them out? They hide very well. So how do you, I don't know. What do you do? I'm sure. I want to know how are y'all dealing with this? You know, and I do want to say this, all the people that's out there protesting, you know, when it's time to vote, I want to see y'all out there in the same amount, in the same capacity. All the people out there in the streets, go ahead and vote. Your vote really says anything. Just like you're out here protesting, get out there and oh, vote. No. Let's see them lines and things yes. just like that. You know, I, I want to be able to see that we have to be a part of the change. If we want to see something different, we have to be a part of the change. We have to make this happen. Go vote, because I know a lot of people, they be like, oh, my vote don't count. I it ain't going to do this. You know, just go. It does make a difference because who you have in office. It does. Yeah. I mean, fill out the census. That makes a lot of sense, too. You know, if it comes, it don't take but like three minutes. If that, fill out the census, vote. Yeah. You know, let's help make changes. That's what we need to see here. changes being made everywhere. Absolutely. You know, it's just, it's been a lot of crazy things. Like, what are y'all feeling? How are y'all feeling? I know it's draining. It is. What do you do? I feel helpless. Yeah. Um, and you know, you want to voice your opinion. You know what I'm saying? And sometimes I just keep my opinion to myself because people like to take things out of content and then it just blows oh. all up. I just like, you know, and just to rather engage in it, I want to keep my peace. I want to keep my sanity. You know what I'm saying? I want to just be peaceful. Yeah. You know, because like, girl, because if I could stay in the bed, I would stay in the bed, you know, because it's just, it's just so draining. Because every time you turn on the news or get on social media, it's overwhelming getting on it. You know, these kids, it, yes. It's you know, and yeah, and every other feed I see is about this, you know. So some of our viewers, you know, that's on with us. What are y'all thoughts? What are some of y'all concerns? We want to hear from you all. Deara says, yes, definitely. Sad, it's best to keep quiet and pray. Ross Jill says, it's good you've found slash created a safe space where you can voice your feelings and not be judged. I had a question for you ladies. Um, how are you guys taking care of yourselves, your mental health, your, your emotional health during this time? What are, what are some things that you're doing to, to decompress and, and try to minimize the stress during this time? Ooh, well, um, I'm a crier. I be crying, I be praying, crying, praying, crying, praying. Talking, talking it out. But that's all I've pretty much been doing. I try to stay busy. Um, I try not to respond because, you know, you hear a lot of sidebar talking. You know, I work in the public. I, I work in the hospital. You know, people are talking about it. You know, I try not to get engaged in what they're doing. So mm -hmm. I stay busy, but I do plan to have a me day. You know, I'm planning, you know, now that things are opening back slowly but surely, 
I just plan on just kind of really probably maybe taking some time to myself. I thought about going to, you know, get my nails done or get my toes polished or something like yeah. that. I thought about that, but I hadn't made any plans mm-hmm. to do that just yet. But I mean, like Candace said, you know, constantly stay in prayer and, you know, and I've been emotional. I've cried. I mean, a song came on the radio. You know, and it was a gospel song, but it, it it's just really touching, you know. It was just saying, you know, he's going to pull us through, you know, and I just have to take that moment to reflect that, you know, we got to leave it in his hands. You know what I'm saying? And that, you know, we can't walk around and fear, you know, we just have to let God, you know, That's take control. Right. We still got to give the world back to him because we got people that want to wear you know, and have control of it, which it, it shouldn't be in, in their hands. It should be in his hands. And we all, you know, need to still realize that. But, you know, I just constantly stay in prayer. And it's okay to be, um, it's okay not to be okay. So I'm just taking time for me. I'm decompressed. You know, when I get off work, you know, my kids be looking for me. <laughs> you know, kids know that. Or, you know, we'll talk. I'll be sitting in my car. I can be at home. <laughs> I'm under the garage, but I'm here. And they look at me, where, where you, you been out here, though? Yes. I just kind of take time to my step and just decompress, you know, and just relax. Woo-sa. So, you know, whatever the case may be, meditate, pray, cry, you know, and just stay busy like you get ready <laughs> And get ready for the next day. You know what I'm saying? And <sighs> And just reach out to loved ones, you know, and just make sure that, you know, you have an outlet. You have someone that you can reach out to because, you know, I will say depression is real. Whether you believe it or not, it's easily to fall into uh, a depressed state of mind. You know what I'm saying? Where you really want to shut your with you to... Shut yourself out. We want you to be able to have an outlet, you know, a safe zone where you can actually talk to someone and not being judged, you know, or whatnot. Yeah. And so, but that's just my thoughts and my views on that. That was a great question. Thank you. What other comments out there? How are y'all feeling? What are y'all doing? What are y'all taking care of? Let's reverse the question. Let me ask you <laughs> what are y'all doing for yes. self-care out there, you know, through this whole Stay insane. You know, even with the COVID-19, you know, things are opening back up. You know, it's a lot going on. You know, Joe's like, like, what are y'all doing? Let me hear from some of you all. I'm still scared for these things to be opening up too, girl. I know, Everything right? opening back up. Yes. It's like I'm excited, but then I'm like, hmm. Danielle says, pray without ceasing. I try to do things to help with my mental health. Clean, spend time with family, take a bath, read books, laugh, anything. I feel that. I definitely feel that. I do too. I do too. And I do want to say one thing. You know, we do have to stay busy because, you know, through this all, this can really stress us and we not realize that it stresses us. And you know, most of our stress, you know, or whatnot. So we just make sure that we're doing what we need to do. So we're not stressing. It's hard. It's heavy. Um, it is. If my you're going to go heavy. out there and protest, That's a good make one. sure you're staying safe. Please be careful. If you're safe, be safe. You know, it, just be careful. Be safe. You know what I'm saying? Talk to your loved ones. You know, if you have kids, not only sons, daughters, you know, Talk to your family members. Everybody. Let them, talk to everybody and let them know, you know, what's going on. Be vigilant. Keep your eyes and your ears open about what's going on here. You know, um, this is really a touchy subject and situation to talk about. But again, you know, it needs to be spoke upon, you know, but it is. It's very sad and emotional. But we really, truly appreciate you all joining in with us tonight. 
We got one more question from Danielle. What is your greatest fear right now? I guess my fear would be that that things will still be the same and a change won't be made. But I'm praying that that is wrong and there's finally a change made. That's one thing that I fear right now. Um, yeah, and then like a lot of people are standing up. I hope they still stay true to their word, not putting on a show to make us or to yeah. appease us. You know what I'm saying? Like keep that same energy, you know what I'm saying? Or whatnot, but I'm like okay, Kenneth, I just hope me. that yeah. What is your biggest fear? For me, uh me, my biggest fear, honestly, is, you know, the day my son gets old enough to go out there because he is, that little boy is an advocate. That little boy is an advocate. Like, he he does, he's compassionate and he cannot stand by when there is, you know, when, it, when something is unjust, he just can't. And that, it yeah. because I know that I'm not going to be able to stop him because that if, if that's his calling, if that's what he needs to do, I'm going to have mm-hmm. to do that. You know, I mean, I know he'll be safe. All I can do is arm him with information and, and teach him to prepare himself. Um, on that same topic, uh, Katia is a, a teammate of mine, Go Bengals, from high school. Uh, she said, my eight-year-old daughter told me she didn't want to die. When I asked her what she meant, she asked why they are killing Black people. She caught me off guard what to say. Uh, and honestly, Ooh, right. that, you know, an eight-year-old, that is, I, I, I honestly, I'm speechless. I would just reassure her that she is safe, uh, that yes. there are, you know, that there are things going on that, you know, they're hard to explain and hard to understand and just reassure her that, she is safe, um, but also I would I would talk to a professional about how to handle that because that that is something that you want to handle correctly. You know, oh you, yes, yeah, there's oof that is oof. I mean, they gave me chills, girl. That, I know That's hard. that was my hard. daughter asked. She was just like, you know, did he go to jail? And I was like, yeah, you know, he went to, you know, trying to talk to her and explain, you know, why, you know, it's like a lot of things I don't have the answer for, you know, because I don't know what's going to happen, you know, because it's just so many people reporting different things. Sometimes you don't know what to believe or what you hear, you know, it's so many back and forth stories about what this happened, that happened, this is going to happen, you know. It's just so much out there to believe, but, you know, as parents, we're going to do the best that we can to educate and to protect our kids and loved ones at the same time. Yeah. Uh, says his biggest fear is that all of this happens and nothing comes of it. It is harder and harder to answer uh, that mm-hmm. question. Basically, you know, what's happening? Why is this happening? It's, it is harder, you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Danielle says, for every Black person in America, including my two sons, I don't feel comfortable sending him out into this world. Seems like more people are forgetting that COVID is out there. Very true. You know, uh, there are reports out there that this disease is disproportionately killing Black people, you know, Mm. and that, you know, there is scary, you know, And, and that's another thing. Information. There's so much misinformation mingling. Yeah we actually need to focus on and the things that we actually need to you know they sway our attention purposely away from things like you said like the census take the census take control of your local government you know these people that are in power do your part don't just get out there and protest get out there and be heard and be on number and be on the books and be represented you know Get up, you know, get us out here. Um, Sydney says, we tell our kids to do certain things to survive, and you see people do those things and still not make it home. That is very, very true. 
I think on that note, we are going to say goodbye. Uh, thank you to everyone who tuned in. Um, please feel free to reach out. We are all advocates. We are all here for each other. We're all in this yeah. together. Thank you all for joining in. Y'all have a good one. Y'all have a good night. Good to see you all.